The 1990s were a bit of a strange time for architecture. Deconstructivism was a force to be reckoned with, and many were wrestling with how to put the pieces back together, usually with a computer. Along comes Diller's Scafidio, not so seduced by the computer's capabilities, and instead decided to challenge the way buildings funnel our vision. Their iconic slow house helped in its own way to propel them to become the giant practice that they are today. But the design was never built, so you can't explore it to uncover its secrets for yourself. Until today, stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Architecture with Stuart. When I was a wee undergraduate student in architecture, Diller and Scafidio was all the rage, and their slow house signaled some promising new direction for design. They treated buildings like machines for viewing and machines for interaction, and their models and their drawings looked like these strange contraptions with metal hinged viewfinders and layers of transparent drawings lined up in a row. All of these newfangled kinds of contraptions were an attempt to capture what their designs would have been like to inhabit. Drawing was limited in certain ways, so they looked to expanding the drawing's capabilities to convey qualities that are difficult to describe with lines just on paper, things like time and movement. And these drawings are still where the house lives because it was never built. The house and the topics that they were dealing with at the time, they seem prophetic today with regard to where technology has taken us both in our lives and in the design of buildings. So we decided to build a computer model of the slow house and to explore what it would have been like to inhabit this important 1990s icon. In this video, we'll go through the model together, but you can also walk through it on your own in the link in the description. But before you do that, spend some time with me as we go through the slow house design and its history beginning with the timeline. The Slow House was designed in 1990 by the firm Diller & Scafidio, named after its two founders, Elizabeth Diller and Ricardo Scafidio. And it was one of their first architectural commissions for the practice, which has now become a large and significant firm with projects all over the world. Elizabeth Diller was born in 1954 in Poland and moved to the US in 1960. Ricardo Scafidio was born in 1935 in New York, where he was teaching at the school of the Cooper Union. It was there that he met Elizabeth Diller while she was a student, and the two began the practice promptly after she graduated in 1979. At first, the practice operated at the margins of architecture and art, while designing and building stage sets, site-specific art installations, and performance pieces. One constant was their close attention to how space shapes the way that people interact. For instance, their installation called Traffic from 1981 was a series of standard orange traffic cones that were spaced four feet apart. While the objects created a cohesive visual field, they didn't impede pedestrian traffic and people became more aware of their movement and the patterns of flow throughout the space. These themes are also present in other work, like their theater set for the Rotary Notary and his hot plate, where their design placed a large mirror so that the audience could see behind the divider wall. This altered the visual relationship between the audience and the performer and their motion. This idea that architecture is like a performance, it can also be traced through the slow house, designed by a young Japanese collector, whose funds eventually dried up, leaving him unable to finish the house. Even though the project was never built, it won multiple awards like the Progressive Architecture Award, and it was shown in exhibitions all over the world, which featured its drawings, models, and video installations about the house. This also kicked off a slow transition from the practice to leverage these lessons they worked on in smaller scales and budgets and to translate them into larger commissions. A big push came in 1999 when they were awarded the MacArthur Genius Grant. They were the first architects to win this important award, though at the time they had little in the way of traditional architecture in their portfolio. But soon after, they would complete the Brasserie restaurant at the base of the Seagram Tower. It featured a series of wooden wrapping planes, cameras, and TV monitors that show people walking down the exaggeratedly extended runway entrance. This picks up on the mechanics of voyeurism and movement present in the slow house. Two years later, they completed the Blur Building, a scaffold floating in a lake equipped with water nozzles that spray a mist covering visitors and an ephemeral cloud vapor that obscures people's vision. These are followed by projects like the ICA in Boston, the Alice Tully Hall, or the High Line in New York. But back in 1990, and Diller Scafidio was just at the brink of a career in building. And while the foundation for the slow house was poured, it was never finished. I really think that the slow house is about exploring viewing and the role that architecture plays in how we interact with each other and with the building. The site is pretty unique in that it sits on an island called North Haven in the Hamptons of New York. This land is highly coveted and super expensive, and if there's anywhere that defines a million dollar view, this is it. So as a response, the architects considered this house to have two primary elements that would drive the design, the entrance and the picture window. 
The rest of the house is really about serving these two elements in addition to providing the necessary space for programs like cooking or sleeping. And the architects had a lot of fun speculating on what would happen inside of these spaces. Overall, the house is two stories, with the private spaces like bedrooms on the first floor and the public spaces up on the second. This elevates the visitors so they can see above the trees and obstacles to the main view at the large end of the open house. The house is shaped like a crescent, within the narrow end for the entrance and the wide end for the picture window at the end. The shape is about delaying and slowly revealing the window destination at the end of your journey. In order to augment your view, there is a closed caption surveillance camera pointed at the water, which is fed to a television monitor hung on the wall, which partially obscures the view outward. This feed could be faked or on a delay, but either way, the idea is that you could simultaneously hold the real view of the water and the mediated one simultaneously. This idea also translated into the way that the architects chose to communicate the design through their drawings and their models, which would go on to tour various exhibitions before being collected by MoMA in New York. These drawings are on transparencies and hung on frames that you can look through, and a model that takes successive slices of the building to try and show you what it's like at the various stages of the progression from the door all the way to the window. That progression is sandwiched between precisely curved walls that are regulated by really complicated geometric relationships. Modeling the slow house was a challenge for a couple reasons. The first is the complicated geometry that governs the curvature of the main walls and the relationship to the interior. These walls also angle upward, introducing another variable into the mix. Getting all these things to connect is no easy feat. The drawings intentionally obscure the clarity of the form to create interpretations that try to communicate with the ideas of the house at the expense of clarity. So that makes things even more difficult to decipher. And the house is like a viewing machine, outfitted with all sorts of mechanics and moving doors, and these are drawn with sweeping curves all over the drawings. Exploring the slow house is a little surreal for me. It was a popular house to use as a precedent for our own designs while I was an undergraduate, and then I went on to graduate school where I would take a studio by Elizabeth Diller. This was much after the design of the slow house though, so this feels like a real insight into the past. I'm also struck by just how much this thing looks like a slug. An animal which is slow. I don't think that's a coincidence. I can't decide if the house is huge or if it's tiny. That seems like part of the design, that it sometimes feels quite small and other times feels quite large. A lot of things move and operate on mechanisms, including the front door. The door swings upward, which seems like it could have been pretty inconvenient, but maybe it was awesome. We enter into a really confined space, and we're given the choice of going left toward the more private spaces of the house or right up to the stairs. At this point, I'm not sure if it's obvious which way is the right way to go, but I know by studying the house that the public spaces are on the right, so let's head that way. The curvature really does do a great job of hiding the view and pulling us along toward the direction that we want to go. While the house does feel like a device for viewing, and its mechanic character is everywhere, the most hyped part of the house is this CCTV setup toward the water with some critics talking about how this mediated view replaces the actual one. But in today's standards, the TV is pretty tiny and off to the side. Its impact is pretty minor to the scale of the house. The horns for mounting the camera are way more pronounced than its interior perception. When we turn around, we see the kitchen, which is largely hidden behind rotating doors and flanked with a counter that opens up to the space below. At this end, we also find a stair downward to the area below. Down here, there are more swinging doors that house bedrooms and bathrooms. These bedrooms are pretty awesome. Although they don't have any openings that allow you to see outward, they're well lit with these angled light wells. All in all, I think that the slow house would have been pretty incredible. I have to admit it. It was certainly the subject of a lot of 1990s hype machine all over magazines and museums, so I was a bit skeptical giving its overexposure. Don't forget to check the link that allows you to walk around the house down in the description. And while you're there, please consider giving the video a like and subscribe to the channel if you're so inclined. Membership to the channel offers various perks, like being able to download the 3D models of all the houses of this Lost series, including this one. 
All of these kinds of interactions help. The stuff takes a ton of work and all of your engagement is great. You'll also be joining these lovely folks. Let's discuss your thoughts about the house in the discussion section. And if you enjoy this video, you might enjoy some of these others. And every week we'll be dropping videos on Thursday mornings. See you then.